Hi, my name is Celine, and today I will tell you the story of Aladdin and the Magic Lamp Part Three. In a quiet place, the vizier made his first wish. Genie, do as I say. I want you to take Aladdin's palace to a faraway place in the desert that no one can find. What the vizier did not know was, at that very moment, Nadia was exploring Aladdin's palace. And there is something else the vizier did not know. The genie thought the vizier had commanded to be taken away, also, along with the palace. So the genie sent the vizier, the golden palace, and Nadia inside it, all together to the faraway place in the desert. The next morning. The Sultan awoke and saw nothing outside his bedroom window, where Aladdin's palace had stood the day before. The next moment, his servants rushed in, announcing that the princess had disappeared. Furious, he called for Aladdin. "What have you done?" he yelled in a rage. "Because of your magic tricks, I have lost my daughter. You must bring her back to me in three days, or it will cost you your head." Aladdin thought he would simply use his second wish, and the genie would bring back the princess and the castle too. But his magic lamp was gone. He looked everywhere. In despair, Aladdin could do nothing but to leave the Sultan's palace on the white horse he had rode in on. Sadly, he rode from town to town, but no one knew anything about a palace that had appeared overnight. Not to mention one with a princess inside. You may wonder, where was the true princess all this time? Dressed as a servant girl, she had crept out of the palace the very day she had switched clothes with Nadia. Down to the marketplace she had gone, and there she met an aging merchant. The old merchant told her. He was tired from riding so many years from town to town, selling his potions and perfumes. The princess was dressed humbly, yet she still carried herself like royalty. She gained the confidence of the old merchant, and when she offered to ride his camel train for him and share what she earned, he was delighted. That is how our princess found herself up clop clopping through the desert. Selling potions and perfumes from town to town. Two days passed. Aladdin was no closer to finding his lost palace than he had been before he left the Sultan. Crouched in front of his tent, Aladdin held his head in his hands. Why the sad face? The princess was riding by, and she stopped her camel train. Perhaps a potion will make you feel better. No, thank you. Said Aladdin, "The only thing that could help is if I could bring back a princess and find my lost palace. You see, my palace vanished overnight to a place I know not where. The princess was probably inside it. Oh, this is an impossible task. Maybe not," said the princess. In my travels, I heard of a palace in the desert that appeared out of nowhere. Not long ago, really," said Aladdin. He looked up. "Do you know where? You think so? I could take you there. If we leave now, we could get there by morning. I'd be so grateful," said Aladdin. He had left all the jewel fruits with his mother except one. This he offered to the camel rider as payment. "Oh, keep it." Said she with a wave of her hand, "It's no trouble. Bring your horse to ride alongside my camel." Riding through the night, the two of them spoke of many things. Aladdin marvelled at the young lady's easy manner and generous spirit. He somehow knew she could be trusted. Before long, he told her his story of how he had discovered the magic lamp in the cave and how it had been stolen from him. Along with the palace, as the morning's light brightened, they were riding between two very tall walls of rock, 
Rose-colored they were, with thin bands of white and blue. Suddenly, the rock walls ended, and they arrived at a clearing. Look, said the princess, pointing ahead. Is that it? Itis. Aladdin cried out with joy, recognizing his palace. I hope the princess is still in there, he said. Though without my lamp, I have no way to get them both back in time. Just then Nadia, who had been carried away along with the palace, as you no doubt remember, was looking out the window at the new guests. To her surprise, she recognized the rider of the camel train as none other than her beloved former mistress. She waved at them both to come to the front door. The servants let in the guests. Nadia took them to the drawing room and shut the door. She said, Mistress, how glad I am to see you.